Hello, students of MTGO Academy. I am your proper professor, Jason Moore, and I'd like to welcome you to this extremely janky installment of Do 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 Dime a Dozen 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 Dozen. I have to po apologize in advance because. MTGO is currently down right now. They updated to a new version and I can't even open it, so we're going to switch things up for the deck tech. Fear not, there are three extremely action packed matches that will follow this deck tech video, so please just bear with me as we use tappedout.net here to perform this deck tech and I had to size the screen a little weirdly just to get some of the ads out of the way as best as I could. This is my custom made Demir Teachings deck. I've been writing about this deck a lot recently on other websites so you might be familiar with it. I also call it the metagame guinea pig. That's just a term of endearment because I built this deck specifically to metagame against the top decks in the popper format. So we're going to play this for three matches and you can see a little bit how it runs. This is my go-to deck in Popper right now. This is one of the only decks that I can play well and that I enjoy playing. And it's been doing very well for me. So yeah, um, I think the, the big takeaway with this deck is that it's very possible actually to metagame against the top decks, which I was surprised to find out. The way that I did that is in order to make this 75, I looked at this deck as an entire um, compilation of 75 cards. I went into you know Microsoft Word or whatever you want and I drew up six different 60 card decks and each of those 60 card decks was what I considered the ideal blue black control build against deck X, so against Esper Familiars, against Mono Blue Delver, etc, etc, etc. So I had I had a D Demir Teaching 60 for Delver, I had a Demir Teaching 60 for Stompy, and on and on for six different enemy decks. And then I hybridized, I merged all of those numbers by just using, get, getting a calculator and uh, kind of put together the average copy number of copies for each card. This is getting really <laughs> way more confusing and roundabout. But basically, I took those 60 decks, merged them together to average out how many different spells I wanted, how many counter spells I wanted, how many disfigures I wanted, blah, blah, blah. So let's just get into the deck because I'm, I'm confusing myself with all this mumbo jumbo. So we we got 25 lands. Started out as 24, but I realized that I wanted 18 blue sources in order to reliably cast counterspell. And that's just how many lands I want. You want to hit your land drops consistently for a, a number of turns. So we've got 11 duels. The Demir Guild Gate is one of them. Dismal Backwater, which is just a guild gate that gains life. I'm not going to scroll up because there's ads <laughs> above. Um, we've got two Evolving Wilds and an Expanse to round things out. So we have 11 sources of either color. Then we have our Basics, 7 Island to give us 18 blue, and 6 Swamp to give us 17 black. And the Swamp is kind of bugging out. And then we had room for one colorless land in the deck. So I decided to make it a Quicksand. And this is because... Quicksand is pretty effective against a number of the creature decks that I'm trying to beat, including Delver, because they have Ninja, Stompy, because everything is targetable with Quicksand, besides, you know, Silhana Ledgewalker and stuff, and Mono Black Control, which just has a lot of Grey Ogres in its deck. So that's a very straightforward land base. Our creature threats, how we win the game, include two Gurmog Angler. And Angler is really awesome. It's actually, I would consider, one of the top ten, possibly top five creatures in the format now. And what it does for us is, let's see if I can scroll down just a smidge, is it provides this extremely relevant clock. 
we have a pretty bad mono red burn matchup but the way that we do beat mono red burn and other decks that um don't inter that we don't have a lot of interaction with is we play this 5-5 five five on turn four or whatever and it just smashes them smashes huge chunks out of their life total so we can close games out incredibly fast and the great th another great thing about this is later in the game we could cast this for as little mana as we want and just leave up all of our other spells in order to interact with the opponent and then for mold drifter which comprises uh, part of our card advantage suite uh, we've got a lot of card draw in this deck, and Mold Drifter is also one of the top 10, top 5 creatures in Popper. So we can cast this as a Divination, or we can just slam it down for 5 mana, and it's really great at stabilizing us and getting us ahead on cards, which is one of the main things this deck wants to do. Um, the deck's game plan, essentially, is to play defensive, prolong the game early on, play a lot of 1 for 1 removal and counter spells, and then it's going to chain mystical teachings, which we're going to get to in just a second. I guess we can do it right now, which is a way for us to tutor other answers, other card draw, other permission. And it creates this semi-soft lock against a lot of decks where we're just constantly drawing into counter spells and using up our mana to cast Mold Drifters and Gurmog Anglers. And we kind of just lock them out of the game. Once we stabilize our life total and stabilize the board, this deck is really good at clearing the board and just leaving the board empty so we can do whatever we want. Mystical Teachings gets us the rest of the way there. So uh, that's part of our end game inevitability. We also have this Una's Grace, which allows us just to see so much more of our deck in the late game, thanks to Retrace. All those excess land drops, we now start pitching to Una's Grace, and we just draw through our deck. We draw more answers. We draw more card draw. The snowball effect really kicks in with a card like this. And then also we have this Pristine Talisman, which gains us an additional life every turn. And the fact that it ramps us a little bit is not irrelevant. And uh, the last piece of inevitability is Evan Carr's Justice which we can use with buyback to continually shock the opponent or just continually wrath their board. So that's another semi-soft lock we have available. We have a ton of removal that I, again, is custom made to cater to the decks in the format. So our one mana removal includes two disfigure. Oh no, two disfigure. <laughs> um, where is it? A dead weight. So I was originally playing 3 Disfigure, but Deadweight I think is just a little bit better against decks like Stompy and Affinity. Stompy has a lot of pump spells that act as counter spells against Disfigure, but Deadweight gets around that to a point to where they only need, they can only have Vines of Vastwood to stop it. And then um, Deadweight obviously kills a Tog, which is insane for one black mana, and it can shrink some of their bigger guys too. We, we've got a lot of Edict effects. Edicts are really good in this format right now. We've got three Chainers Edict, which I think is kind of the superior one because we get it back in the late game. The flashback is very relevant. We do get to seven mana. They do have creatures um, that we want to kill at that stage. And then two Diabolic Edict. And the, the um, relevant part of this is that it's tutorable with Mystical Teachings. We also have a Tragic Slip at one mana, which works great because it's very versatile early on it can kill a small guy later on we can either evoke mole drifter we can block or we can edict them and then we can use this as a one mana source to plowshares basically and we also have rounding it out a victim of night which was originally a doom blade but I was facing a lot of mono black control and this isn't great against mono black control because it doesn't stop Grey Merchant or Gurmog Angler, but it's uh, better than Doomblade. <laughs> uh, and then our counter suite in the main deck, four counter spell, two disfigure. And then just the rest of it is just more velocity in the deck. Four preordain, insane. This is one of the best cards ever. Compulsive Research as uh, just a one up to also get us ahead on cards. And that kind of stuff smooths out our draws and it helps us transition from that early game 
we're trying to stabilize to the late game we are stabilized and now we are taking over and just slapping people across the face so the the draw suite overall is four preordain a single compulsive research three mystical teachings four mole drifter two think twice and an una's grace so a lot of draw but it's necessary I, a lot of control decks and even ones i've built have been at fault for this just don't have enough card draw so they have all the right answers in place but having about 12 of those draw spells or draw effects is very important in order to keep everything together you need to draw every, your whole deck you know you need to draw lands you need to draw answers you need to draw into more draw you need to draw counter spells to keep them from resolving something that'll be a problem and then ultimately you need to draw into your ways to win so that's the main deck let's look at our sideboard which is just as pivotal in making this deck work so first i'm going to talk about the the mono black control cards the cards that we bring in for mono black against mono black they have a hundred thousand removal spells sometimes they can even kill every single creature we have in game one but they're going to have to leave in some removal because they're going to see that we're playing Gurmog angler and mole drifter so this card curse of the bloody tome is our alternate win condition against them we board out of our Gurmog anglers and our plan is just to stay alive long enough for them to get milled out. It's very viable. It may seem like jank to some people or you're wondering, oh, how, how relevant is this? It's extremely relevant. It's how we win. It does reliably beat them. Um, and, to round, and to supplement that, we also have deep analysis. Mono black control is very much an attrition deck. They're going to attack our hand. They're going to attack us with creatures. So, and they're going to be drawing cards. So when they make us discard we can discard this and then get get ahead on cards or we can just you know hard cast it and flash it back to just have a lot more cards in hand we also bring in um, extra hard counters against them because they have these haymakers that they drop for like five mana six mana they play gray merchant they play gurmog angler they play corrupt sometimes they play death denied sometimes so we just have to counter those and make sure they don't hit the table so we have an, a deprive to supplement the four counter spells main and we also have a fairy trickery which is the newest inclusion to the deck this one's been okay i mean it's basically just a cancel but it's uh really a dissipate so it exiles which so far that part of it has not been too relevant but i'm gonna keep trying it out just to see how we like it and then some of the other cards that we bring in for mono black we bring in against other people as well so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna just jump into those so let's look at some of our uh, anti-creature cards for decks like nivik cyclops and affinity we have a doom blade because they play really big creatures and we really just need a cheap answer to remove that we also play a copy of vendetta which is really important too um, vendetta is great because it's a one mana instant speed answer to any size creature even though we're going to pay some life uh, the fact that it's instant speed and one mana is sick first of all a lot of people aren't going to be playing around this card second of all if you want to beat delver what you have to do is you need to fight them at instant speed for cheap so you you basically bring a knife to a gunfight that's they 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 fight on that axis of uh, instant speed, cheap spells, tempo plays. So we have to one up them. We have to play one mana spells while they're playing two mana spells. We have to fight them on their upkeep and you know various stages of their turn when they want to fight us on our turn. So this card's really relevant, really great. We also have Serrated Arrows, which is awesome as a value removal spell against decks like Delver, Stompy, and Mono Black Control. And usually coming in along with a lot of our creature kill is this card Crypt Incursion. Now this can be used just as a straight up graveyard disruption spell against people like Tortured Existence and even against Esper Familiars if they're playing Reaping the Graves. But what it is for us also is just an incredibly explosive life gain spell that, that gains us over 20 life for 3 mana because we're killing their creatures in the case of mono black we're milling a lot of their creatures too and um 
this just gets insane. We can teachings for it, so it really shuts down decks like Goblins, Stompy. It makes it so they're absolutely 100% unable to beat us. What other cards do I need to speak about? Anti-creature. I mean, this is the definition of anti-creature. It's like a volcanic fallout. Later in the game, you can get it back. So I, I board into three of these against Stompy and then against decks like Goblins as well. We're not specifically metagamed against Goblins, but we just have a lot of uh, coincidental hate cards against that deck. And um, I haven't lost a match to Goblins so far. You usually lose game one, and then as long as you are drawing into your Justices and your Hydro Blasts, you can usually beat them games two and three. We have two Hydro Blasts. This is mostly for Is It Fiend, because it's a one-mana answer to Kiln Fiend and Nivix Cyclops. It can also stop their Pyro Blasts. It can also stop their Teamer Battle Rages. And um, this is also a great card against Affinity, though. So, you, you know, try and look at a card and see all of its possible applications. This stops Affinity's most dangerous threat, which is a Tog. It also stops... Fling, Galvanic Blast, and Pyroblast, which, is, which are their three best instants. Um, you know, it's debatable. Perilous Research is also pretty good. But, you know, whatever. We have Nihil Spellbomb, which can stop, which can fight against Esper Familiars and against Mono Black Control. Both of those guys like to recur creatures from their graveyard. And uh, any other graveyard synergy decks we can fight. I think I talked about every single card on this sideboard. Yep, I did. So this is Demir Teachings. I apologize that the layout is so crappy. You guys probably are not even watching this much of the video because because it just is different and it doesn't look good and all that. So I hope you will enjoy the matches. I think they're pretty fun. And I want to thank you guys very much for tuning in to this installment of, you know what it's called, See you guys later. Hi, folks, and welcome to a two-man queue. We've won the die roll. We're going to play first with Demir Teachings. However, we can't keep this hand. Look at it. There's no lands here. It's not going to really help us to not have lands. So let's go ahead and mulligan and hope for the best. This hand only has two spells, but one of them is a preordain, and two-ish of them are removal, so I think we'll keep. Oops. Keep. Have to watch our clock here. Okay, let's go. Red deck, a Crow and Crusader. So, I think we can preordain first and then try and kill that. So, he's mono red. We probably want justice. I think we want preordain as well. Top, top. Next turn, we might even just evoke Moldrifter, but I think we can try and find a land so we can play Moldrifter on five. We can we can dig into a two mana removal spell, hopefully. Frostburn Weird. So he's mono red creatures. So yeah, I think we want to preordain here. We find a counter spell, which is no good. I think I'm going to bottom both of these. Try and find like an edict. Disfigure might do it. Should I leave up the quicksand? There's a chance he has something hasty. There's also a chance. Um, if I leave up the quicksand, he's not going to pump his guy to uh, to toughness. So I'm going to leave up the swamp and maybe he will. Looks like he's going to. Whoa. 2 3. Okay. Dragon Mantle post combat. And 
Now he has fire breathing. Okay, so we have an option here. Do we want to disfigure this? Or do we want to use justice? I think we're going to disfigure that now. However, it's really tough. Maybe I'll untap and see what I draw. Because this guy has to go. This guy's going to be a problem. I think I'll just disfigure this. There's a lot of removal we can still draw to deal with him. So, I think I'm going to divination here. However, if I do that, I can't draw a tragic slip and cast it. I think that's all right because we are still at a pretty high life total. He's probably got a bunch of pump spells, but... Okay, this is good now. We even have a dispel. So if he doesn't have a fourth creature... will be good. So he can pump it a billion times with Dragon Mantle. That resolves. So what does he do with the Scry? So he can make me take like seven. Top. Okay. Another one. So if he has Battle Rage, I'm going to 5. I'm going to 10. That's, a, that's perfectly acceptable. And he tops his other card, so it's probably a creature threat. So if nothing changes, I'm going to tap 2 Swamps to play the Edict. And um, leave up quicksand and dispel. Yeah, so nothing really changed. We'll just do it now. We could try and get him, but... Yeah, you know what? We maybe should have tried, and tried to get him. I'm really used to casting stuff on my turn, but I don't think it was actually correct there. So he's got two more cards. That's going to resolve, so it's an X2. Draws a card. As long as we can deal with this guy, we'll be okay. We'll see if we can. So he's got two more pumps. That's what we're looking at here. So we can try and justice, but if we do that... Um, he just pumps it up. He has to literally have nothing here. And if he does have something, we just take a bunch of damage. Maybe I grace now, which leaves up dispel. I think I, I think I can afford to grace now. Okay. We have double dispel and quicksand. So I make quicksand. Oh, he doesn't. Ooh. So was that a mistake or does he just have nothing? Maybe he just has nothing. Okay. This is pretty good. We can. We can actually just pass here. We can try and get him now. We have double dispel. I set a stop on the damage step. Okay. So... Maybe I just 
just kill this now. We need to just make a decision here. I'm just gonna pass, and then I'll run. I'll run everything on his end step uh, if he doesn't attack me. Yeah, he's kind of flooded, which I like to see. All right, cool. Um, we have to assume he's playing some burn spells here. Potentially three of them. Drew a mole drifter. Might be the case that we just want to victim him end step, but... He's, he wants to shock me. I'm going to let that resolve. Shock is not the best. Lightning Strike now drops me to 5. So we... Because there's not really a lot of other stuff we're doing with our dispels, I'm going to go ahead and count, counter that one. We should be safe. Okay, we're at 5 now. So we know we can justice this if we want. That does drop us to 3, which is very dangerous. So I think I'm actually going to evoke one of the mole drifters, leave up Dispel, and kill his guy. Talisman is good. So let's do this on his upkeep. I feel pretty safe here. We also could have waited. Like, we could possibly get him if he just pump, 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 pumps. Hang on. Okay. So, I'm feeling very good. Now we have a full-on counter spell. So, we will probably win if we just leave up everything possible. And we, we can start thinking about flashing back that Una's Grace. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I can definitely play Mole Drifter and leave up both. Yeah, that's going to be okay. I'm going to gain that back in the, over the course of just a few turns here. Two, three, four, five. Draw, draw, draw. We can play Angler this turn. I'd rather just leave up both counters just to be a hundred percent safe counter him and we'll close this game out so let's attack first we can play mole drifter here We have another counter spell. Um, I don't know that we need to leave up double, but I'm just going to do it anyway. There's kind of no reason not to. Two, three, four, five, six. And yeah, this game should be over. Oh, I tapped wrong. We don't have double counter spell in hand, we have counter spell dispel pretty silly but this is fine too let's just counter and draw okay so that was very good for us very good for us um, this seems like a winnable matchup one of the toughest things he can do is either have an, a busted crusader draw early or make this thing so big that we might not be able to deal with it but usually in these colors we can so let's look at what we, we're going to want to cut here. And I think the main thing is going to be those counter spells. You Against most aggressive board swarming decks, and this deck sometimes swarms the board with Crusader, but it's also just a heroic deck with pumps. 
so that would make it similar to Stompy as well. We want to cut the counter spells. Justice is not insane. We probably want one just in case Crusader gets out of hand. So these are the cards I'm immediately most interested in. Arrows is is probably a necessary evil. Doomblade is actually pretty awesome. Vendetta could backfire. I kind of want to make some more cuts here. I think we can afford to cut a land on, on the draw and because we have uh, no more counter spells. I think we can afford to... Just having a one mana answer to Crusader I think is so important. So we'll incorporate that. And I think if we want an Arrows, we want to cut a Mystical Teachings and go like that. So the Crypt Incursion is just a huge life gain spell. The Dispel stop his Titan strengths and his burn. He's got a lot of burn, actually. Yeah, I think I like the way this is set up. we got to be careful because we are now on the draw, but I think overall this is the kind of deck we want to end up facing. So this hand I'm going to keep... It's really not a mulligan by any stretch. It does not currently have a one mana answer to a Crow and Crusader, but that's the only strike against it. Everything else is looking very good with this hand. It's not flooded with lands. It's got spells we can cast very early. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and open up all my options. If we find an Edict, it really doesn't matter how big his creature gets, though he may have another creature to uh, supplement. So that could get awkward. Nope. Um, and in fact, we're at the point where... Oh, he's got another... So, this figure's not going to do it here. Oh, he's got two guys. Well, this is looking kind of awkward. I think I want to find a one mana answer to his guy. So, there's a disfigure. Justice at this point, we have no idea how good it's going to be. And we already have a four, which is arrows, so it's very difficult to decide if we want to keep this or not. I think I'm going to... Wow, it's really tough. I think I'm going to bottom it. And I don't have a specific reason why. Uh, it's just kind of what my intuition's telling me that the way our man, our spells are laid out we're not going to be casting justice and arrows and this draw so he's really going in he's got one more card hopefully it's just a bolt okay so i'm going to preordain again it gives us it gives us a chance to draw either hydro blast edict effect so it is a Hydro Blast. One, two, three, four, five. We don't need this land, even though it gains us life. Top. So I'm going to do it on his upkeep. Just in case we... Um, just in case he has a Pyro Blast. It makes him use the mana on his turn. So if this resolves, I feel very good about this game. Land, go. All right, so we're looking real good. So now we just decide, do we leave up Think Twice? Yeah, I think we do. I think I want to hard cast this Mole Drifter, and I don't want to play ch uh, arrows into open mana. So we might... Okay. But... It's, sorry, not into open mana, into an empty board, because then there's a chance they just smash the smithereens it and kill everything. So here I'm actually going to play Arrows. And then if that resolves, I'm going to try and kill the Crusader. If that resolves, which I don't think he has a pump because he would have just done it probably to uh, get a guy, but I'm not sure. And then if, if this guy dies, then I can preordain with this extra information. We could leave up Tragic Slip, but I don't think we have to. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. I guess I'll keep the Mole Drifter. Mm. 
Maybe we just want to find another Hydro Blast or a Teachings at this point. I think we have enough removal to the point that... Uh, okay, I'm at 9. That anything he draws we can stop. I guess one way we lose is just getting burned out. Which he's probably holding now. It's hard to say. But I am just going to go Shields down. He, I don't think we can lose next turn to burn, so being at 9 is really good. I guess I'll just play the quicksand in case he has a haste guy that we can't stop. We also might just have a creature locked out because we have... Ooh. Okay, we're at 5. And there's a Hydro Blast to protect us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... We want to start getting a clock together. So it looks like Mole Drifter Beatdown is probably how we're winning this game. We have so much removal, we never have to counter a creature. We just have to counter Burn. Let's attack first, make sure the coast is clear. Now I'm going to thin, and I'm going to play Mold Drifter, leaving up Slip, and Hydro Blast. We're going to have to discard? No, we're at 7. Okay, we have Dispel as well. Absolutely amazing. He's pretty much locked out of the game now. He's going to just Scry. That's fine. Him being at five, or us being at five and virtually six is pretty nice. He doesn't have a lot of live draws. I mean, he basically just has to draw to burn now. And we have two counter spells for that. So, and he's on a three turn clock. So I think there's pretty much no way we can lose. So I'll play this. And I'll just attack. I don't need to think twice now. I mean, I guess it's possible we draw into angler or something to make the clock shorter. So I'll just go ahead and do it. We draw a land, so we'll just end up pitching a land. That's fine. Alright, so this game ended up going very well. He mulliganed, and um, we were just able to preordain into answers for his early creatures. And that was pretty much it. So he can have that. And it's pretty much no way we're losing. We can attack. Chainer's Edict, his guy. Crypt Incursion to gain 3, 6, 9, 12 life, which is actually not a very impressive Crypt Incursion compared to some of the other ones. But 3 mana for 12 life is still a pretty damn good deal. Let's put this game all the way out of reach. I mean, we don't even have to do this now, but... I don't think the game's going to go much longer, so we might as well just fire it off and get it get it to hit, and there you go. Yeah. Um, it's weird. In blue-black control, there's not a lot of life gain spells, but Crypt Incursion is just a really explosive, huge life gain spell. So we win this match. We win 30 play points, which I don't honestly even know <laughs> what that does for us. I guess it just lets us play some more. So that's good. This was my first event with these new uh, stipulations and all that. Thank you guys for watching. Hi folks, we're back again for round number two here. Two man cues, we're on the draw. We will keep our hands a little slow. Playing against the blue deck, preordain on turn one. Let's see what he does. Top. Top. Okay. Well, Hopefully no fast pressure because we don't have a lot to do. Okay, we do have a counter spell. He might be mono blue, and that could mean Delver, could mean a lot of things. If he just flashes in a sprite, I think I'm gonna counter it. I have nothing else going on, so I might as well. We're gonna try and research. Plus, we want to fill up our graveyard. He has a morph, so that's got to be a fathom seer, right? 
So I think I'll take this opportunity to research. So that's just a gush on wheels. We want a black land. So let's see. Next turn we can leave up teachings. The fetch can help us fill our graveyard. One, two, three. So I guess I'll just pitch. I don't want that many tapped lands though. Hmm. Hurry up. Um, yeah, I'll I'll pitch the expanse. That's fine. We uh eh, I I meant to pitch the backwater actually. I just rushed at the last second. I meant to pitch the backwater in case we have an opening for angler. But we're probably just going to play mystical teachings here, I guess. Well, depending what happens. He's got a ninja. Oh, he's gushing now. Okay. It's a little awkward because he can't use the... Well, I guess he knew he was drawing ninja. Yeah, this is awkward. Awkward is all get out. Man, I needed to have that in my yard. What a disgrace. We're actually in awesome position if that's in my yard. Don't want island. Guess I'll take preordain and try and find a kill for the ninja. Man, we're in trouble now. Wow, this. If we just had Angler on the table, this game is so different. I don't think we're going to have time for most of this stuff. I guess I'll keep the victim. So this is only growing if, wow, I really botched this game. I... All right, time to just think ahead here. He's going to draw a card. He is behind on mana, so we're not out of this game. It's just going to be tough. If he just morphs, he loses everything if he doesn't gush again. So that's an option. We can also... Oh, okay. Oh, this evolves off of that? Okay. So we're just going to have to Justice, which puts us pretty low. He's got a billion cards. We do have a victim for... Okay. So at least we get that. So we know he has Fairy Miscreant. Oh, that's pretty good. I think we're going to have to just... Oh, I can't Justice and play Angler. I can Edict and play... I have to Justice this turn. It's just the way of the world. Which drops me to 11, then the Raptor is going to be pretty rough. I think we might be okay. If he's not playing, like, leaving up counter spells and stuff, I think we might be okay. We're screwed on black now, also because of our discard. Ugh. This is so, uh, like... How should I say this? This is so, um, clunky. It's so awkward. This whole game just played out super awkward. Okay, so I can victim the raptor and leave up teachings? We're still getting beat the hell down. He's representing Vapor Snag. I think I've seen a version of this deck that it basically doesn't run that many counters and it runs you know these guys wow this is so bad for me swamp dispels not terrible so I could also edict I'm at nine I think I just have to kill this now oh boy <clears throat> well we can draw something with the teachings I don't know what we're gonna draw But it better be good. Angler stops this guy. Edict stops one of his other guys. So I think we just need like a counter spell or something. We're going to five. He's got another ninja. 
Oh no, he's well. He he might have another ninja. Which is just really awkward. I may just have to get a removal spell and hope that dispel does it. Okay, so I'm going to five. I don't know what I pick up. It depends if he taps out or not. Yeah, he taps out, so I'm going to get a removal spell. Wow. And it's going to be a disfigure. Ugh. Yeah. Okay. Man, this is so awkward. Okay, that's good. I might even be able to play two... Uh, two... No, nah, I don't think I can play two anglers. So we're definitely going to Edict here. He doesn't know about... Okay, if I just take the flyer down... Angler kind of brick walls him. Hopefully. I'm going to take the flyer down. Wow, I was really getting punished there. Okay, we have another angler next turn. We have a dispel to protect us. He's got like a million cards though. He probably has a couple ways to stop this. Bottom, top, that's not good. All right, let's hope that he doesn't have a sprite. I think he does though. Oh, he really doesn't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can edict him again. Gush. Okay. So I can teachings find an answer for that. We're really kind of like. Oh, there's a counter spell. Perfect. So I can teachings and get something. Five, seven mana. I can also just play another Gurmog Angler and try and kind of try and race. I think I want a Teaching Zoe. The problem is the only thing I can get is Tragic Slip. I guess I can get a... Uh, I guess we can just wait. Because if he flips this into a Ninja... I can get a disfigure and kill it. I can also try and tragic slip EOT. Oh, being at five really stinks. Bottom, top. Okay. That kind of sucks. So I have to get some kind of removal here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I have to get a tragic slip and hope that that's good enough for his flyer. Oh my god. Okay. Wow, this is a beating! Can't believe this. So, what did he just do? He got rid of the Fathom Seer. Oh shit, it costs six. Whoops. So now I think I have to Edict and play Angler. Okay. 
Could also play Angler and leave up some other stuff. Could play Angler for two. One, two, six, seven, eight. That doesn't do it. So I think I have to edict this turn and just hope I'm not dead. Yep. But that gives. Ah, oh, shoot. That gives me only five in my yard. Wow, this is so awkward. Every step of the way has been so awkward. Oh, boy. I th We're dead on board. So I have to do something. I could teachings for a, a, an edict here. Or I can just edict now. Oh, man. I'm just going to edict now. I don't know. I don't know, guys. That was so sad. We're going to one. Then I have no idea what we can draw. We can draw Mold Drifter. Like, that card exists in our deck. Where is that guy? Yep. It's going to be hard as hell. Yeah, he's just so threat dense. Go to one. And that's pretty much it, guys. Six. Can't really do anything. Okay. So, this is going to be interesting. He's got a lot of big guys. I think I've faced this deck once before. It's kind of hard. Um, we do have a lot of, like, Doom Blades and stuff. And we have um, Crypt Incursion. So, I think we do want to cut counter spells. He just, ha he just has a lot of threats, and they're really hard to stop. Dispel might be okay. He does have Vapor Snag. Um, Evancar's Justice seems good against him. Doomblade and Vendetta seem awesome against him. Crypt Incursion seems good. So do we want Arrows or Justice? Most of his guys are like... You know, he has Dream Stalker, which is a 1-5. He has 1-3 Fathom Seers. I really don't know. On the play, I don't know if I want to cut a land, but I think we can cut one teachings. Maybe Dispel is just not what we want. Vapor Snag. I think we just want as much removal as possible. And I don't even know if those are good. I think I might actually just play one hard counter. All right, <laughs> we're we're all out anti aggro mode. I don't know if this is perfect boarding, but I'm gonna try it. He's got so many creatures, we have to do something to him. So, and yeah, we can keep this hand. Play an island in case we draw our uh, one of counter spell. Just kill everything, guys. Yep, we'll do it. Then get a teachings to kill some more stuff. Being on the play is a huge benefit. He might not even have a play. Yeah, he does. So we might stop him on his upkeep to edict. Might just do it now while he's tapped out. Ooh. Yeah, we'll do it now while he's tapped out. He's going to probably sack the cloud. And try and pump this. It might be the case that we can just draw a justice and kill whatever he throws in. But, okay. So we're going to have to deal with that. And that's not a justice. So what can I get with my teachings that's going to be the best for me? I'm 
Probably just like a Doom Blade. Top, top. Well, that resolves. That evolves. I mean, yeah, this board presence. This is just not a deck that's, that was on my radar. And it's uh, really hard to stop. The creatures are so big. And they're cheap. It's un it's unlike some of the other decks. I mean, obviously, Affinity can make big creatures. Maybe I should have left in counter spells. Because against Affinity, I leave in counter spells. Could have Vapor Snag here. So I have to kill some stuff. I want this figure for the ninja. He's representing... He's representing a lot right now. But I'll get a... It's Doomblade is the most catch-all answer of them all. It's representing Vapor Snag. If I think twice, I could find a Dispel. I think I left in one Dispel. I think I'm going to have to do this on his turn. I think we want that, but maybe not. If we can kill this, then we do. Next turn, we have one, two, three, four, five... So his deck makes it so awkward for these decisions because if this evolves, yeah, most of his creatures he could play out though will die to this. One, two, three, four, five. So we just adjust this. Man, I don't even know if I have time for a talisman. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. So he might Vapor Snag. I think I have to kill this guy. Actually, if he snags now, he can just cast it. So I have to do it during his attack step. That sucks. Alright, I'm going to try and kill this guy then. Good lord, this matchup is a nightmare. <laughs> Look at this. Like, how do you beat this board? Maybe I play Mold Drifter, but this Evan Car's Justice is horrible. Yeah, I should have I should have boarded for this like affinity. This entire match has been just one big punt. Oh well. It happens. I'll have to review this pretty hardcore. I mean, what can I even do? What can I draw? Crypt Incursion draws gains me six life, but I'm gonna take. I mean, it's basically lethal on board. So I guess I just have to draw a card. And go to one. Like, there's nothing I can draw. I guess he could miss his attack step, and I can play Una's Grace. Wow. I just got wrecked. Absolutely wrecked. Guess we'll just see more of his deck for the future. I mean, we might play him again <laughs> in these two men, so. Yeah, his deck's pretty good against Justice. Yeah, that's not going to do it. 
I'm just going to concede and uh, rethink life here. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. We are back playing against a Generation X. We're on the draw with a one-lander, but we can do a couple things, so I think I'm going to keep it. It's a very close decision. We have 25, 24 lands still in the deck. Could be mono black. We have two draw steps. Yeah, so we'll see how it goes. Just going to cycle. Yeah, mono black. So sometimes this matchup's tough. Sometimes it's feels like feels pretty easy. The problem with game one is that they kill every creature I have and I can't win sometimes. Sometimes. Not always, but sometimes that does seem to be how it happens. Okay. So I think I'm just going to disfigure this. Then if we miss a land, we can still try and think twice into it. So now I guess I just research. I think we're going to have to discard. No, we go from 5 to 8, and then we discard to the research. So I will pitch the tapped land, and then I have teachings up. This is going pretty good so far. Like, there's no pressure on us, but he's probably going to rats us. Which, okay. So I think we actually preordain and then edict that. Could also edict and leave up think twice, but it's all right. We do want a fifth land. I don't think we're gonna shuffle our library, so binning these mold drifters is not terrible. Okay, and then we have our two worst cards in the matchup, which is dispel. Pretty much our worst card. I mean, it's gonna come into play towards the end of this game because he's gonna throw removal at our guys, and it's gonna be really awkward. Okay, Grey Merchant. Alright, that's a problem with our current hand, so. But we do draw the Edict. I think I want to think twice and try and find a land first, though. Like, we are going to use the Edict. Do you find our land. Now he's going to Bajuka Bog us, probably, and then we just lose everything. But he is down to. Well, four-ish cards. Okay, it's not a bog. It's another gray merchant. So that's really gross. So I think we're actually going to tap... Oh. So I guess we just leave everything up at this point. We are going to take a hit, but then we're going to draw it. You know, we're going to tutor up an answer. It's going to be a Diabolic Edict. Victim of Night does not get this guy. Edict, however, does. And there's a land drop. So I think we just... Edict him at some point during his turn. Okay, so he's got all removal, which means we're never winning this game, which is really sad. Um, yeah, we just pass again. We have teachings in hand, so I think we just get more stuff. Get another blue, get another counter spell. Now we can play Drifter with Counterspell Backup. It is going to drop us to... Um, eight cards if we don't hit our land drop. It's going to make us discard, rather. Still going to just do it. What do you know? We hit our land drop. I'll cast a spell on a removal spell. I'm going to aggressively counter a removal. 
because there's nothing else. Our guy's still going to die, like... Is this going to Chainer's Edict or something? Alright, I'm actually... I mean, I can't win if I let every removal spell resolve. So the worst thing you could have here is Grey Merchant, but we can still Edict that, so I'm going to... St I'm going to have to aggressively counter these removal spells. I normally would never, ever do that in my life. But I know how these games play out. And they always play out with me um, running out of creatures. So try again. I mean, they all it happens every single time. So, well, not every single time, but... Based on, in this scenario, what I'm talking about, where he still has multiple, multiple cards in hand, th this is what happens. So, I have to shift gears and now try to um, counter his removal. It's possible I also maybe want to try and mill him with Una's Grace, but I think that's very much a no-no. Because, uh, quite simply, hang on, Let's see what this is, sure. Quite simply, it's going to draw him to, into so many threats that we actually will lose the game that way. If we can take game one, that would be huge. I don't know that that's what's going to end up happening, but... So, two, five, nine. So, we can leave up teachings as well. Wow, we have two teachings in our yard, one in our hand. So if he ever draws Bajuka Bog, we have two edicts in the yard, two teachings. If he ever draws Bajuka Bog, we're just crying. Okay, he's a little flooded. He's going to flash back the uh, edict. Yep, that's going to resolve. I'm going to get a counter spell. Alright, we might be able to get him. I need to draw Angler like really, really fast. He's hiding from me. Okay. Is there any draw in my yard? I really don't like when that revealed thing comes up because it blocks everything from my um, my view. Like my, it blocks everything in my graveyard. It's just really poorly. Let's move my graveyard. It's just really poorly set up. He knows I have a counter spell. Yeah, dispel. Okay, he's down to one card. I'm liking this. Okay, so I think I actually just teachings for Una's Grace. Oh, I have another counter spell. Okay. Well, I like that. All right, <laughs> Mole Drifter beat down. We're going to get there. Probably sitting on Corrupt. Just a super haymaker. This works out so that we can actually Una's Grace and leave up Counterspell. We may win this game. Need, I need you, Angler. I'm going to pitch anything that's not Angler. Oh, never mind. Another threat works nicely. I forgot we still have Mole Drifters here. 
this is just turbocharged three, four, five. Still not there. Do I play this land? I'll play one more land so I don't have to discard. Then I'll start gracing. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to kill it. I'm going to counter removal spells. I'm going to remove creatures. All right, I guess we have to counter this. Oh, never mind. We don't. Good to know that he has that main deck, though. We even have a quicksand if we want it. I'm going to leave up mana. That can actually kill him, but for now I'm going to do this, because I don't want to destroy my board. Let's just do this first, then we can grace if we want. Tragic slip. He's on a three-turn clock. Now I'll grace myself. Could be the case that... Um, I wanted to do this first because I might draw, you know, a removal spell that's a little more appropriate. All right, so I'm going to do it like this. I'm just going to pass um, on double counter spell, and then end of turn I can. I still have a teachings in the yard, but I don't know what I want with it. I have so many edicts. Sure, so now he's dead to the Evan Carr's justice. He's still dead to the Evan Carr's justice, right? Six, nine, so I can just cast it twice. So as long as he doesn't gain life, I'm going to be okay. Cycle. Four, five, eight, thirteen, fourteen. So I can definitely counter spell and justice twice. So I'm going to go for it. Okay, let's just try this. So stealing game one is huge. So important. It's not even stealing. We clearly won this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow, I don't have up counterspell. How did I do that wrong? Oh, no, I do. This is going to cost four. <laughs> two, three, four. I have double counterspell. Awesome. Whew. Okay. 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 Um, we do see he's got main deck Shinobi, which could be a problem. Usually I cut things like Disfigure, but we may want to stop that Shinobi. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. 28 cards. He probably is playing Chittering Rats. Tendrils of Corruption is going to be totally dead once I board out of my... Cre my uh, well, not totally dead, but... We're not beating him with damage. I don't think we, we should try and beat him with damage. Because it really punishes him if he leaves in removal. By doing what we're about to do. So one justice is probably good. Victim of Night is pretty bad. Because if he's playing Angler, that's so many blanks. It's, it's um, Grey Merchant and Angler, which are blank. I think I want to leave in Disfigures this time. I usually don't. That's kind of weird. So, and we're not going to have room for everything I want to bring in. I want to bring in some more cards, but... Basically, we want, you know... 
all of our late game stuff and ways to deal with creatures. Usually I cut disfigures, but he's got... He's got Shinobi. Dead weight at least shrinks something, because I want to bring in Graveyard Hate and Arrows, so... I suppose I can cut one Mystical Teachings... For this, which gains us life and stops an instant speed thing. Spell bomb's typically better, but I want arrows too. Being on the draw, I think we want this one mana stuff. Maybe on the draw we cut an expensive counter. <coughs> counter, excuse me. Man, I want to make two cuts, but I have 48 seconds. I could cut the talisman. Which I normally don't like doing. Man, can I slip in a Nihil spell bomb here? Probably not. We really want all the rest of this. I don't want to cut a land necessarily. Um, maybe I cut one disfigure. The only thing we really want to disfigure. Eh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. We'll see how it goes. The only thing we really want to disfigure is that Shinobi. You know, at instant speed, I mean. Ugh, look at this terrible hand. No way we can keep this. There's nobody in the format that we beat with this hand. And this hand's super awkward, too, but I don't want to go to five. We're going to hopefully preordain our way there. Yeah, this hand's super awkward. I probably should... Should have thought more about it. I don't know. Maybe I st st <coughs> still keep, but okay. Find me some lands. Nope. Nope. Yeah, we should have a land within that many cards, so. I'm not too surprised that we hit it. That means we have all gas, kind of. An untapped land would probably be our best draw. Oh, he missed a land drop, too. That might give us the time we need here. Yeah, we might dig out of this now. I think that was just enough leeway. He might miss another land. He might he might be decide whoa. I don't think you cycle that and not play it, buddy. That's so risky. I don't know why you would do that. That seems really weird. Okay. We could leave up trickery, but we don't have to. He's so behind on tempo, he's only gonna ever play one thing. So six, and I go up to nine, then I'm going to have to discard if I do it this way. But I also, so maybe I play Moldrifter. Yeah. We don't need Moldrifters on the table usually unless they're just blockers, so. This so way if we do hit a land, we don't have to discard. Cool. Man, my hand is stacked now. Very, very stacked. Okay. Well, I would like to draw a land. Oh, this is perfect. So we can Edict. And uh, leave up our Fairy Trickery. Pitch Gray Merchant. All right. Well, just not, just not going to play around Graveyard Hate. We didn't see any Bajuka Bogs, so... Yeah, I think he might be too far behind now. What's this? Wrench mind. So I could just pitch the arrows. I think the trickery is going to be more dead than the arrows, though. The arrows can potentially get us two guys, two and a half, or a guy and a half, so. Let's just get that out of here.
I mean, that kind of a plan, it, it's really late in the day uh, for him to be enacting that because he's so far behind on tempo. We don't have anything really to play. This just leaves up Diabolic Edict, but it doesn't leave up Think Twice. Okay. So probably casting the Diabolic Edict. Sure. See, that doesn't even set us back that much, because he's so far behind, too. This game's looking great. Just cast you. Don't think it matters, but <clears throat> rather hide the quicksand information. He is now okay, that's fine. Doesn't matter one bit. Sure. And there's our win con, four, six, seven, eight. So I think we can do this first. Uh, I'm just gonna enact our win con now, and then, then we can just never tap out again. There are there's a few things he could draw right now that could be a problem or play, but. We have most of the things covered. So. This is Wrench Mind. I'll pitch the serrated arrows. If it's another one, okay. Cool. Three, seven, Eight, so I could flash this back. It's probably I. I have quicksand in play. It's probably safer just to leave up quicksand, crypt incursion, and mystical teachings. I'll just quicksand this guy. It's another merchant down. Sure. Very few things we counter at this point. Yep. It's just getting you closer to zero cards in library, buddy. Do this before blockers. Oh, okay. Three. Now I think I have enough to flash back and leave up counter spell. Three, four. Eight, nine. It's five, yeah. So that's fine. Any creature will let resolve. Uh, we really just, the only thing that can really get us at this point is death denied or, you know, font of return or something. So as long as we don't let that resolve, it doesn't really matter. Looks like Angler. Oh, looks like Grey Merchant. Yep, that's fine. Just gonna kill that. That's all. That's all I'm gonna do. Just kill that. I'll keep playing lands. I have a lot of stuff I want to do with my mana here. So, as far as I can tell, you can pretty much never come back from this. kind of want to keep an eye on everybody's graveyard, but there's not enough room on the screen for that. Okay. Yeah, I have an answer for that. No big deal. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So I can flashback teachings for teachings at this point. Still have up counterspell. 
Yeah, he's pretty screwed. Oops. Only one more teachings in uh, the deck because I did take some out, so that's good to know. 3, 4, 9, 10, 11. So I can flash this back and have up two counter spells. Let's do that. And I won't even tap out for the teachings, because like I said, Death Denied is really the only way we lose at this point. There's the Font of Return, so we know he's playing at least that, but I'm still not going to tap out. There's no reason. What is this? Angler? I have an answer. Oh, Wrench Mind. I will counter a Wrench Mind. That's one of the only things I'll counter, because it does affect what I have in my hand. Okay. That's all he had to do. Interesting. 3, 4, 9, 10, 11. So I guess we can preordain here. Maybe find another curse and just try and win faster. Yeah, I mean, I think both of these are fine. But are we using teachings? 3, 4, 8, 10. So I can think twice and teachings. Okay, that's fine. We'll just We'll just leave it like that. He's never getting us with damage because we can gain, ooh, that makes things interesting. We can gain 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. All right, let's see. What's in our graveyard that matters? There's actually nothing. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> we did that, we played that perfectly because... Um, <laughs> we had a bunch of Chainer's Edicts and stuff in there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we'll just do this. I'm just going to keep playing lands. I think it's actually fine. I don't know what I get with the Mystical Teachings from here. Oh, I get Deprive. That's right. Oh. Yep, pretty rough, buddy. Pretty rough. One, two, three. Yep. Don't even necessarily need to cast that. Three, four, nine, twelve. I'll cast it anyway. He's not going to have any haste. Yep, so I have triple counter spell. I'll go ahead and pitch my Una's Grace. Could pitch the land also, but I'll pitch the Una's Grace, that's fine. This is epic. Choking Sands. That's not going to do much against me. Yep, sure. I don't even need this Crypt Incursion unless he goes for something. Chittering Rats. Yeah, that's okay too. He's going to draw a card, so... I think we're safe with just one counter spell up here, so not too worried. And we just pass. With four counter spells, an imminent win condition. He's got eight cards in library. Pretty much nothing he can do to hurt us. We have like twenty one life built in. Don't do anything here. We'll draw a card, however. I 
guess I'll just pass with this up. It doesn't really matter. It's a slow death. Um, yeah, that's not going to beat us. We don't even have to kill it. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I don't even think... If he just has all gray merchants from here, which he doesn't because we have at least two in his yard, right? He still... Can't do anything. Oh, look at that. Mm, I'll just do it on my turn. Um, just to have up all the possible everything. So that's seven cards, so I'll just... What is this? Tendril's his own guy? Sure. I don't care about your life total. Two cards left. So actually I can Una's Grace him. Oh! I can Una's Grace him. Corrupt me. For how much? Three, six, nine. Use my life total as a resource. Okay, so I can Una's Grace him. The first thing I'm going to do is gain a bunch of life now. It's not 100% necessary, but it's pretty, pretty great. Okay. <laughs> um... Yeah, that went, that went better, I, th I would say, than average, slightly, but... We're playing so much card advantage and so much control, pure unmitigated control, that the, the match can play out like that. I've had matches against Mono Black that have gone better than that, and then obviously ones that have gone worse. They, that game one's really tricky because they can literally kill all of your creatures. So you saw that I once I once I stabilized that, that game state... I aggressively started countering his removal spells, and it happened to work out that game. I don't know it's 100% correct. It seems correct, though. It seems like aggressively countering their removal spells at that stage, if if the game is looking how it is, uh, is correct. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this teachings deck. I've been having uh, a lot of success playing it. We did have a pretty poorly played uh, round two, and that style of mono blue is something I'm not used to. So we may have to keep an eye out for that deck on our radar but otherwise i want to thank you guys very much for tuning in to this installment of dime a dozen dozen